All right, folks, welcome back to Wilderness Wargaming. Today we're going to talk about seven things that are easily forgotten when playing a game of Warhammer, and if you remember them, can really improve your play. We'll have one for each phase. Uh, this is a redo of the original version of this video. We had a little bit of an editing snafu. Uh, still kind of trying to learn the old YouTube thing, but uh, hopefully this one will be a better experience than the first one. As always, please like, subscribe, comment, and click the notifications bell for more great content that will be coming up in the near future. So in the command phase, now a lot of armies have uh, extensive buffs that they can hand out to uh, to specific units during the command phase, such as the Adeptus Mechanicus or the Leagues of Votan. But some armies only do that uh, with rare occasion with certain characters, or uh, a character may or may not have the ability to hand out a buff depending on if you give them a certain add-on, like the Space Marine Chapter Master version of the Captain, who can hand out a full reroll. Of hits to one specific unit but can't do it if you don't give him the, the chapter master upgrade uh, make sure that you remember if you're not used to doing this to hand out those buffs that's a that's a huge advantage and you're paying an awful lot of points to have it available so don't don't forget about it in the movement phase remember that your reinforcements need to come in after you've done all of your other movement because it is technically step two of the movement phase and regular normal moves advance fall back that sort of thing is done in phase one um, technically speaking your opponent can tell you if you start bringing in reinforcements uh, that you can't go back and move any other units now this is a, not a good move to do in casual play um, or with a new player who's just learning but if it's at a tournament somebody could technically do that to you um, also be wary at tournaments of the kind of person who quote-unquote helpfully reminds you about your reinforcements uh, right at the beginning of your movement uh, in trying to get you to deploy them early so that they can then make that claim that that's very very rare most people would not do that sort of thing but I have heard of it happening before so don't forget this guy moves before these ladies come in from their deep strike we don't want any heresy. Also, as a bonus, uh, don't forget that your reinforcements are there. Uh, if you're playing, say, in the kitchen, and you set them up over by the sink uh, to get them out of the way of the kitchen table, uh, don't forget that they're over there and then play through the entire battle having forgot to deploy your reserves. In the psychic phase, now, some armies don't have psychers, and I happen to own three different armies like that. So sometimes it's a little hard to remember you even have psychers. Don't forget them. But also, don't forget that your psychers can't just cast powers. They can deny powers as well. And sometimes if you only have one psyker, you may forget about that or, or that, that he's in range to deny some powers and not other ones. Also, don't forget that some non-psyker units, and in some cases, entire armies like the sisters, uh, have denies that are pretty effective even when they can't... Um, cast yes, psychic powers themselves that can really shut down the offensive power of certain armies like gray knights or thousand suns who rely a lot on psychic power to advance themselves in the shooting phase don't forget that for each unit you have to declare all the weapons in that unit and what their target is before you fire any of them now this doesn't mean you have to declare your entire army if you're new to the game don't don't think you have to declare all shooting in your whole army all at once but you can't fire on, for example, the Eldar Falcon here, the pulse laser to target, and then uh, wait to see if that target's destroyed before you decide what to do with the scatter laser and the shuriken catapults. Uh, now, if you have multiple Falcons, uh, since each one is its own unit, you can fire one Falcon and then target the next one. But you cannot go back to a unit later on once you've once you've left it and stopped firing its weapons, nor can you uh, declare one weapon, observe the results, and then declare the other ones. That's a big no-no. Next up, so when you are on the receiving end of a charge, this one is more for in your opponent's turn. If you happen to have this guy standing nearby, don't forget that not only is he a melee monster, because it is your opponent's turn, you can heroically intervene if he is within three inches. Now, many models uh, have the ability to uh, intervene even farther than that, sometimes up to six inches, and sometimes you can be given the units, not just characters. So also be cognizant of rules, but three inches is the baseline. Um, and also don't forget that this only works in your opponent's charge phase. If you are the one charging with the bikes and you happen to have your character standing by, uh, you cannot then heroically intervene onto the bikes that just charged. In the fight phase. Now, 
If you have weapons that increase your number of attacks, that's usually pretty easy to remember, such as the Lightning Claw or Chain Swords in the picture. But don't forget these guys also have Shock Assault, as all Space Marines do. And what Shock Assault does is gives you an extra attack when you charged or charged when you charge or charged or heroically intervene. That gives you yet another attack. And if you're not used to playing Space Marines, you may forget about that. Um, in the case of these particular bikes, they only have one baseline attack. So giving them the Chain Swords and Lightning Claws and then the Shock Assault takes it up to three. It literally triples their output on the first round of combat. It's very important to remember. By the same token, if you are like the Shadow Keepers here and you have an ability that reduces your opponent's number of attacks, don't forget to remind your opponent to subtract one from the attacks characteristics of all his models in melee. That's going to greatly reduce the amount of incoming damage you have to deal with. Now, the morale phase. Now, the main thing about the morale phase, I would say, is don't forget that it exists. A lot of times we get used to not even doing much of the morale phase because often, uh, especially with armies that have minimum size units or have very few models in a unit, such as Space Marines or Custodians, where you often have units of only three or lots of units that are only one, uh, there's basically no way to fail and we get used to just not rolling it. But don't forget that it's there. And also don't forget that the combat attrition test after the morale failure, if it happens, is a separate test. And although it implies rolling a 1 is a failure, it's actually a 1 or less. It is not an unmodified 1, it's not a natural 1, but any result that is a 1 or below. And certain armies, such as the Night Lords, um, actually have this as one of their major abilities. Now the Night Lords ability is notoriously weak, but it turns out it's even weaker if you don't even use the rule. Don't forget that they apply a minus two to leadership, which can make a lot of a, a lot of leadership tests, morale tests that you wouldn't even take normally, suddenly relevant. Uh, and they they also apply an additional minus one on top of the potentially half strength penalty on the second test, the combat attrition. Also, these stack, I believe, up to a total of minus three. So the minus two you get here from the Night Lords. Since Night Lords also love Raptors, can stack with the Raptors Fearsome Aura to reduce leadership by three. And now all of a sudden failing the leadership test is actually a significant threat for a lot of armies that it normally wouldn't be. If this is if this is a thing for your army or for your opponent's army, don't forget to do the morale tests, even if normally you wouldn't roll them. It can greatly affect your capabilities on the tabletop. So that's all I have for you today in terms of what it's important not to forget uh, we're going to be coming back soon uh, we have a WYSIWYG video uh, a video on 40k's lack of the concept of canon what canon is and uh, why you probably don't want canon in a gaming intellectual property as opposed to a narrative one and how that helps us as 40k players to design the armies we want to design and uh, pretty soon we're going to be coming out with our first food videos as well as additional videos on how to plan trips with kids and keep yourself and your family sane. So hope to see you back again for more Wilderness Wargaming very soon. Once again, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, and click the notifications bell.